In this video, we're going to be taking a look at three examples of detail scans using the RevoPoint Miraco, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of different scans I did using the near mode on the RevoPoint Miraco. Now, remember the scanner was sent to me, so consider it a paid promotion. And also this is still part of the Kickstarter phase until November 30th. So if you wanna support the Kickstarter campaign, you can go to the link in the description below. I don't have any affiliate links or any benefits for you buying one. So keep that in mind that whether you buy one or not, I'm still gonna to try to give you my honest opinion on the scanner. So with that said, let's take a look at three different examples, talk about where this thing works really well, and maybe some areas where it doesn't work as well. So the first example here is a turbo. Now, this is a small turbo, originally came from a three-cylinder diesel Bobcat, and it's for one of my motorcycle projects. With that in, in mind, the inlet is about 45 millimeters to give you a sort of a rough idea on scale, and it is cast. And we can see a lot of detail came through. Now, remember when you're using the near mode on the Morocco scanner, you're talking about 0 0.01 millimeter accuracy for a single frame. When you're on the far mode, you're talking about 0.2 millimeter accuracy. You can switch back and forth between. So if this turbo was mounted to something, you could get a far scan. And then as you get closer, switch to near mode when the scan is paused and pick up these details all in a single scan. Now I have found that that's a little bit tricky with tracking because the details you need to track are probably gonna be out of the range of what the far mode can capture, but it is possible. Now this is a sort of raw unprocessed mesh. I didn't do any smoothing or any additional work to it. You can see the edges are still pretty rough. And there are some areas where it might seem like it didn't capture the detail very well, but this casting mark as we go around the outside is actually pretty rough especially in this area here. But if we go to a smooth version, I capped off the ends and I did a little bit more processing to try to smooth it out to see how it would look. And I'm pretty happy with the results. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're talking about scans that have a lot of detail like this, you have options to smooth at both the point level and at the mesh level. And I found that smoothing at the point level is great for larger objects, things like car fenders, but smoothing at the mesh level seems to work a little bit better when we're talking about details like lettering, texturing, casting marks, those kinds of things. The reason for that is because as we start to manipulate the points and move them up and down in these areas where we have a high change in angle, that's going to drastically affect the clarity of those letters, those casting marks that come out. So I found that smoothing at the mesh level seems to be a better option. Now, after we take a look at this here, we're gonna move into Fusion and take a look at the mesh there as well. But overall, I was pretty impressed with the level of detail that I was able to pull out of this. Now, I did do this in two different scans. I scanned the top, I flipped it over and scanned the bottom, but I ended up capping this off and partially because there's a lot of lips and features on the inside of the turbo. And these are areas where I just couldn't capture the data very well. Now, the way that these turbos work, obviously, is we've got this compressor housing and we can kind of get enough detail on the way that it transitions inside of there. But because it goes from a very small area here and then a very deep cavity, it just couldn't pick up down in those areas. Now, I didn't really coat the thing with scan spray in there, but in general, scanners don't like to scan into those deep cavities. So let's take a look at this in Fusion 360 and see what the mesh looks like. So in Fusion, I brought both the sort of raw unprocessed mesh, and then I brought the smooth mesh on the left. Now you can see this is a cast part, so we do get a little bit more texture on the casting on the raw version, but you'll also notice that details like this 9.7 in this casting area and the TB, that these look a little bit crisper than they do on the smooth version. Now, again, if you do this at the point level, you're gonna lose a lot of those details. If you do it at the mesh level, you will retain those details, but they're gonna look a little bit melted. It's just kind of the nature of the process. Now, where I think that this probably falls a bit short in the process really comes down to the tools you have to process the points and the mesh in the RevoScan software. 
Now, it's not to say anything bad about those tools. You just don't have the level of control to be able to retain these fine details and reduce the mesh element size across the larger areas. It's kind of one or the other. You have to pick and choose whether you're okay with losing some of those details to get a cleaner mesh, or if you wanna dive a bit deeper and keep the rougher details. Now, if we take a look at the mesh elements and we zoom in, we can see that we've got a lot of small triangles and it, it really captures the detail pretty well. Now, I, as I mentioned, the center section here is about 45 millimeters. I did put a set of calipers on it, keeping in mind that it is tapered, it's a bit hard to get an accurate representation, but we were well within the range that I would expect for a consumer hobby grade scanner to be. I measured, I think it was 45.6 millimeters and the mesh section sketch was coming in at about 45.5 to 45.55. So within about 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters, keeping in mind that I am measuring a tapered part. So I, I don't have a really good way to accurately measure those areas because everything is tapered on this cast part. So let's hop back into RevoScan and take a look at the second example. So for the second example, I had a lot of questions and requests about details on rims. Now, I don't have a video on doing an entire rim right now. I will hopefully try to get one of those, but honestly, these scan videos take a good bit of time, and I just don't know that I have the time before the end of the Kickstarter campaign. But I did at least want to pull off some of these casting details. Now, this is a, again, raw scan, unprocessed. The rim is cast, it has a bit of texture detail on it, so it doesn't look very smooth, but in reality, that's actually what the rim looks like. It, it does have that sort of texture to it because it's not a machined finish. Now, I did pick up the Mitsubishi logo, and I also picked up some details on the size of the rim. Now, one of the differences here is that I ended up doing some processing to this. I smoothed it out at the mesh stage, not the point stage. So you can kind of see the difference here we still see the letters, but things look a little bit more melted. And again, if you process at the point stage, you end up losing some of those details. But if you process these fine details at the mesh stage, it's able to keep the finer density and actually able to keep some of those details. Now, let's go ahead and hop into Fusion and take a look at these. So with the rims, what I ended up doing was bringing in both the raw and then the smooth or process so we could get a good idea of what that looks like. Now again, this is a cast rim. It's probably not as smooth as the smooth version and it's not as rough as this rough version. It's somewhere in between. But again, if you wanna keep these small details, you have to pick and choose your methods of smoothing the points or smoothing out things like the, the mesh after it's been generated. Now, if we take a look at the mesh and we zoom into, let's say this Mitsubishi on the raw one, we have a lot of little triangles, and I'm really happy with how it was able to pull out these details. This is certainly enough information for me to reverse engineer the, the font, the size of the text, and all those different details. It captured the edges really well, so we can see the taper going down this way. We could pick up on probably the fillet size if we were reverse engineering this. And overall, I was pretty happy with the level of detail that it picked out. And we take a look at the smooth version. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Again, the smooth version does a little bit of restructuring those mesh elements. So we end up getting a bit of a softer look to these letters and numbers. And when we take a look at the raw one. Let's go ahead and just zoom out here. We can really see that we've got more triangles in these areas. So we are picking up more of that detail. So once you start to process these, you are gonna begin losing out on some detail still perfectly legible. We can tell that it's a six and a half inch wide rim, 15 inches and the offset value. So overall, again, I'm happy with the level of detail. The smoothing didn't really hurt the corners or edges very much. So if I was not concerned with having these casting marks and I just wanted to delete and patch that area, doing some additional smoothing and processing would still give me enough detail so that I could go back through the process and redesign this part. So with that said, let's look at the last example that I have. So this last part was probably the trickiest part and maybe the most common thing that you might try to reverse engineer. So this is the marker light, it actually goes this way. Uh, this is the marker light off of the same car. And 
basically there are three or four different scans merged together and there's still some missing data here. So I'm gonna talk about what it did well, areas where it struggled a little bit and kind of my overall impression. Now, if we rotate this around, there is enough, enough information here to pull out, you can see Stanley, we can see the part number, this says USA here, it says Japan over here. Now it's not perfect, but these are tiny letters on an injection molded part. They don't quite have the same presence that we have on things like the casting letters, which are much taller on a rim or on a turbo. I am still able to pick these out, but it would be much harder. Like I can see that's a 46-0407. Uh, there's an L there. This is a big L here for left side. And we can see that there's a Phillips head screw here and we can get the information about the marker light, the way that the bulb is inserted. I, I have plenty of detail here to where I could work this part and I could begin to reverse engineer it. Now, the areas where this struggled really come down to the rubber gasket, the gasket that goes around this part. Now, in reality, it would probably be best to remove it, but it is glued on. So that's not something that I really wanted to do. But the areas where that rubber gasket are kind of thin on the top and it blends into the rest of the part, those are the areas where it really struggled. This part also is bowed a little bit uh, it, because it was broken up here. It does still screw on here, but this lens is glued in and the part does have a little bit of a bow to it. So it's not perfectly straight. But overall, I think that it was able to get enough detail that you could replicate this part in 3D if you wanted to. Now, a couple of notes about a part like this. We have a lot of fine detail. So for example, this recess for the screw, we've got these little features here and the lens is actually a separate piece that's glued in. So there is a small seam or a gap around it. And you can see areas where it tried to fill those in. Now, I think that you can get enough to recreate a part like this. It's not gonna be a nice clean mesh and it's not gonna be something that you just say, send to a 3D printer for a couple of different reasons. One, because the information around that rubber gasket, even though I use scan spray, it's so thin and it's black, it just had a harder time picking that up around the outside of the part. Another area where it struggled, and this is not a knock on the scanner at all because pretty much all scanners have this trouble, is there are some deep areas in the scan. So there's a little bit of a structural rib here, and then there's a pocket because this is an injection molded part that is going to be the backside of this piece here. Now, with that said, if we take a look at things like the raw scan, you can see that it's missing detail or missing points in those areas. And that's simply because it has trouble when it's shining down into a deep area like that. Even if there's scan spray, it just is not really able to pick that up. Now, in reality, is that really a problem? Probably not, because if we're gonna be recreating this part, we know it's an injection molded part, we know it's consistent wall thickness, and we have the detail on the outside. So I could simply use that detail on the outside and use it as a consistent wall thickness part and keeping in mind that on the inside, I need to account for that. So I still could work with it. I still have enough detail, enough data. Um, I am pretty happy with how it actually handled the sharp edges and corners on this, but we do have missing holes in the data. Uh, what I would probably say here is you should take your parts take them apart as far as you can. So I should remove this little clip for the wire, take the screw out. If I can get that rubber gasket off, clean everything up as best as possible. It's not going to really get down into the details. There's a little pocket right there. It couldn't pick up these little pocket areas. It's not really going to pick those up. And we just have to sort of account for that when we're talking about reverse engineering the part. We can see the rubber gasket on the top. It goes all the way around to the front here. We can kind of see where it tried to merge those together. But in reality, those are separate pieces. And if I wanted the cleanest possible scan, I should take this apart as far as possible before using that scan spray and prepping it. But in reality, I think I'm pretty happy that gasket on the top really messed the scan up. And if that wasn't there, I think that this would be a really good scan. When you're talking about ones that have little details like this, it's really tricky because in general, using smoothing at the point level is gonna to start to remove detail from things like these, the part numbers, like you can see Stanley is written right there, there's DOT. But if you don't need those, then you can certainly process the point. 
a design like this, I probably would not process the mesh just simply because we'll start to lose some of these sharper corners. Because they are so drastic on this part, that would be an issue that I would want to avoid. But in general, I think that the scanner itself did really well picking up details on the rim, picking up details on the turbo. And even with this marker light, which is probably one of the trickier parts, I still have enough there. And in reality, if I was trying to remake this part, I could do it from this data, or I could go back and decide to pull that gasket off around the outside, maybe clean up the back a little bit, get a Q-tip or something in those dark, darker areas, and really try to coat some scan spray in there to see if I would be able to pick up those details. So I think now it's time that we address one last question that I see all the time, either through email or in comments of some of these scan videos. And that's the comments that say, the scan data is junk, you can't use it for reverse engineering. I, I think I wanna make sure that we make this point clear is that we are talking about hobby consumer grade scanners. Now, even though Revopoint Mini and Morocco might say on their website that it's metrology grade, really what they're claiming is that it's got the accuracy of 0 0.01, 0 0.02 millimeters for a single frame. Now, while that is true, it is not going to directly compete with a $50,000 scanner. Now, for us to think that we're going to get $50,000 scanner performance out of a $1,000 scanner is just absurd. You have to level set your expectations for what you will get out of a hobby grade scanner. Now, I think that this scanner has done great. Uh, my expectations for the level of detail it got off of the rim and the turbo are well exceeded. Now, I didn't think that it would be able to pick that detail up as well as it did. For this marker light, I think that it did a great job. It could have done better if I removed the gasket and did a little bit more prep work. But overall, I'm happy with the level of detail I was able to pull out of this. Now, if I did this same scan with a fifteen dollars to $50,000 scanner, would I have gotten a better mesh? Yes. Those scanners come with a different level of software as well that helps you deal with processing the points and the mesh at a different level. Now, that's important to understand because at a professional level, you're gonna be investing a lot more money in your equipment, in your software than at the hobby consumer level. I, I think it's really important and I can't really stress it enough. Don't expect to get 50 or $100,000 scanner performance out of a 500 to $1,000 scanner. It's just not realistic. You can still do quite a lot with these hobby scanners. They're getting better and better every day. Software updates really help us because it helps us process the points in the mesh better, but don't expect the results of a professional metrology grade scanner when you're talking about a hobby level scanner. You wouldn't expect to buy a commuter car and go to a racetrack and beat dedicated race cars. It's just not what you would expect to get. So with that said, I think that the end goal here is accomplished of talking about detailed scans with the Revo Point Morocco. Now, if you are still looking to get a new scanner or add a scanner to your fleet, keep in mind that this is still under a Kickstarter campaign until November 30th. So if you do want to go ahead and take a look at that, go to the description of the video below. You can also download the three data sets that I showed in this video. The Fusion 360 links will be in the video as well. And if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.